Hey folks, it's Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is of a film starring Robert Forster called The Banker. Starring Robert Forster, Dunder Raider, Shanna Reed, Jeff Conway, Leif Garrett, and Richard Roundtree as the captain. Produced and directed by William Webb. St uh, screenplay by Dana Augustine. This DVD, the cover sucks because it looks like a ripoff of The Fast and Furious. It has nothing to do with that. And even the DVD itself, it's a pretty cheap DVD. It's almost a VHS quality DVD. So I'm glad that I have it officially. And it was free. So I can't complain about it. I first heard about this film from my friend Mike, OCP Communications. My good friend. And watching this film, <clears throat> it's an alright film. The biggest plus is Robert Forster. I know on IMDb there's actually a little blurb from the writer talking about how I guess Robert Forster had told him that Quentin Tarantino seemed like a fan of this from his video store days and this was one of the movies that made Tarantino hire Robert Forster for Jackie Brown. At least apparently this is what Robert Forster told the writer of this movie. So I guess the writer still keeps in touch with Robert Forster, but I I don't the idea is interesting. Dunder Raider, who is Dracula and the Monster Squad, I see him in another role. He plays this rich banker who hires hookers, gets hookers, prostitutes, takes them over to this place or wherever. And then hunts them down with a crossbow. He says he's a guy for the hunt. Uh, once in a while he wears war paint. Seems like he has a fascination with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It's not a big thing up in your face, but it's like a little thing that you pick up on. And Robert Forster is a cop who has to stop him. Now, it's an alright film. It's not... I can't really even call this an action film. I didn't really think... Because it's not... I can't really see... A whole, it seems like a whole lot doesn't happen. I mean, it's not too violent of a movie. I mean, you got some titties. Uh, he, the guy kills with a crossbow, and it's not a big body count. And a lot of times when the guy shoots a crossbow, you don't see the arrow go into someone. Like when the first two women he kills, you just see him fire a crossbow and that's it. And you just get, get the idea that they were killed. You don't even see like a really up close of the body. Not a lot of action. There's really no car chases. There's no big gunfight. There's no really big fist fights. There's one little explosion inside a car. A little bit of gunfire at the end. But it's not like this big battle that Robert Forster has with the banker. So it's one of those films I just see a lot of people. I just see why it gets low ratings on IMDb. It's not the most exciting film. It's definitely no I Come in Peace with Dolph Lundgren or any of that stuff. It's an uneventful movie. But I didn't hate it. I think if Robert Forster didn't star in it and the idea wasn't at least interesting to me. I probably would have hated this film, but I thought Robert Forster played a fun character. And again, the idea is interesting. I mean, his Dr. Raider, his crossbow has his red light on it, and this hooker's like looking through his wall and he kills her. Like Richard Roundtree shaft himself, he's the boss, the captain. Uh, Robert For I, I think Robert Forster is a great actor. He plays a fun character. I mean, he he's found passed out in this treehouse. Gets his new partner. Ha talks with this female reporter that you can tell they were in a relationship before. Like when they see each other, he goes, you, you. And then the girl immediately slaps Robert Forster in the face. And from Mr. Dollar, for example, he comes across Jeff Conaway, who's this sleazy pimp, who, oh, you're 15? Oh, no, you're 16, you're 17, you're 18. And Robert Forrest busts in, and Jeff Conaway, may he rest in peace, he was in Greece and a lot of this stuff. 
he passed away quite a while ago. But Robert Forrester goes, well, actually, Jeff Conway goes, who are you? Who the hell are you? And Forrester is like, I'm a father. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm a cop and you're under arrest. Like little bits of dialogue that were Robert Forrester that made me smile or smirk or chuckle. I thought a reader, I thought he did a nice job. It didn't nice to see him other than Dracula and the Monster Squad. He's definitely a crazy guy. Would sit alone in this wall of TVs as his if he's fucking Bruce Wayne. Seeing multiple TV screens of weird stuff. Drives these fast cars. Gets a little scuffle with these two guys. Guy tries to come at him with a knife. He gets the guy says, you could poke your eye out with that. Then he picks up girls. One girl tries to call Robert Forster. She gets knocked out. Duncan gives her a knife. And the hunt begins. It's not really much of a hunt. Pretty much just follows her to the rooftop. And she gets killed by a crossbow. Yeah, it's not the most exciting thing. <coughs> but yeah, Robert Forster's fun. Fun lines of dialogue. Apprehend this asshole. They start finding clues. It's sort of a police procedural movie, in a way. They look at clues. They find this bit... It seems like the sus the suspect had a thousand dollar bill. Uh, Robert Forster looking for information. Like he pulls out his badge. They said you can't come in. This is a gold card. You no, know, get out of my way. Uh, or hey, I'm a lazy son of a bitch, but I also have this snitch. So you know what? I'm going to talk to him. Or you better watch it, or you're going to trip over your own dick. <laughs> or he's driving the guy by the coat. And people are looking at him, oh, I'm Miss Taylor, I'm giving him a fitting. All right. Robert Forster pulls the dialogue off much better than I would. And long story short, Jarf Conway is a pimp. He finds out Duncan is doing shit, blackmails him. Uh, there's bits where it cuts to the female reporter who constantly baiting the killer on TV. It was just the third act. It's funny, <clears throat> I never noticed this kind of stuff in movies, but I actually wrote it down. 53 minutes, 25 seconds. There's a boom mic that's up top here. Imagine, because it's a white background. Again, it's like 53 minutes, 25 seconds. It's Robert Forster talking to someone. It's a white background. And imagine people talking. All of a sudden, uh, you see something black like... They just did. Where are my feet? And I'm looking like, what the fuck is that? Uh, rewind is like, oh, it's, my God, it's a boom mic. I mean, I'm the type of guy, I think I get sucked into a movie. Hopefully, I don't notice that kind of stuff, but, you know, no one needs to boom mic shots. So there's some mistakes on that. It's funny, in the places that there's some posters, like there's one called a choice, and it's a poster of Ghostbusters on the front. So kind of some weird stuff in this movie. But yeah, Robert Forrester makes it fun to watch. He gets the female reporter, you're under arrest for lack of common sense. And she says, oh, we gotta, you know, no, I have a First Amendment. And he takes her to the morgue and shows the biases. Oh yeah, well, what amendment protected them, huh? And yeah, he's trying to do the right things, just doing it for the right reason. Jeff Conway is with a girl. The girl gets killed. He gets captured on the hunt. Shoots someone. He's given a crossbow. Shoots someone. It's the wrong guy. And he goes into his car. I did some fun, decent bits of writing. The other guy begs for, oh, give me another chance. And Dr. Raider I like Dr. Raider. He goes, oh, okay. I'll give you another chance. Quit. Name the seven doors. And then Jeff Conway starts naming it. Um, Dopey, uh, Snoopy. And then <laughs> Dr. Dose, Snoopy. Really? Snoopy? And he shoots his flaming arrow into the car, and there's something there, and it blows up. I think there's like a gasoline can or something, and it blows up. Inside the car, inside the car blows up. And they get to the crime scene. Robert Forster finds a, a lighter there. 
which leads to which I found kind of weird that the w did Jeff Conaway I think I guess he stole the lighter because I wouldn't think the the killer would be that stupid to just leave his lighter behind I think because they find it in a, a leftover booth that just Jeff Conway stole it and that's for part of the blackmail I guess I just didn't notice him stealing it Um, they probably did, but I didn't. It's not the most eventful, interesting movie. I mean, again, it's a little bit of a chore to sit through because it's like the first half hour is pretty much those two girls getting killed, and you might as well be a cutaway shots and just sort of a police procedural movie, something like you would see on like a TV show. I mean, if you're going expecting gunfire fight, you know, action, you're not going to get action, you're not going to get much violence gore, you're not, I don't really find any suspense, so really I'm finding is, I like Dungeon Raider as the bad guy, I like Robert Forster as the good guy, and the premise is at least a little bit interesting, and I've seen much worse movies, but I've seen much better as well. You know, some fun bits of dialogue Robert Forster's character I like. For example, talking with the captain, and Captain's complaining, and Robert Forster goes, well, that sounds like an awful lot of brown nosing to me. And the guy goes, oh yeah, you think this rich banker is a killer? They're all bloodsuckers. This guy just happens to be the real thing. And you get to the third ad, Duncan Raider calls a reporter, Robert Forster's partner gets there, gets shot with an arrow, gets sent to the hospital, playing phone tag with the killer gets to a phone, you're late. You had no shit. <laughs> this little hunt begins. Armed Forcer braces light bulb, hides, fates out the killer, gets the girl out of the way of a crossbow, uh, get to the ceiling, the ceiling, the rooftop. No, the walking on the ceiling. They get to the rooftop. And again, it's not a big extravagant sequence. It's pretty much he has a crossbow on the girl. Robert Forster has a gun on the killer. Robert Forster quickly says, drop. So the girl drops, shoots the guy. The guy falls. Then the guy gets back up and says, you know, I've gained this power. Now it is yours. I'm Dan. I'm a cop and you're fucked. <laughs> get shot multiple times and pretty much the movie ends so this is a harmless movie the banker for a movie that no one has ever talked about even Tarantino like they said Tarantino was a fan he I never heard him talk about this movie no one ever talks about this movie it is a full point selling on IMDb this is a harmless movie a lot, a lot of action not really that eventful and if you don't want it for body count or violence or I want to say violence like special effects or anything like that or fast pace or fisticuffs any of that stuff you're not going to deal with this if you this cover that looks like Fast and Furious movie you definitely not going to get that either the score I can't remember the score I remember the score not being bad but not memorable either. But I said it's not memorable film, but it was a time waster. For Robert Forster, for Duncan Raider, for the idea, some fun bits of dialogue, it was a satisfying enough ending. No sequel bait ending, no downbeat ending. Um, I'm glad I have this for my collection because I like Robert Forster, but films like Alligator by Robert Forster are much better than this. But there's been a lot worse as well. Like you, just, for me, I could do a lot worse than the banker. This is why it's not a rant. It's, it's there. It was a time waster. I'm glad I have the DVD. I wasn't mad. But if you watch the film, it's not gonna be the most exciting film. But if you're a big Robert Forster fan, check it out. If the idea interests you, check it out. And oh, I'm glad that I, I've seen the film. I'm glad that I have the film. 
can't say it's not underrated. Can't say it's a gym. But I've seen a lot worse as well. So that's the banker. Not I like I liked it alright. I liked it alright. Shitty DVD. But I liked it alright. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.